Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 Ali, the fourth Khalifa. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had something uniquely in common with one of his Sahaba, the fourth Khalifa, Ali. Can anybody tell me what that, that is? Something unique that they had in common, that those two had in common. Anybody can tell me? I'll give you a hint. Yes, Muhammad? Okay, yes, they were related by blood, yes, but that's not what I'm talking about. The hint has something to do with marriage. The hint has something to do with marriage. Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had something uniquely in common with his companion, Ali. Had something to do with marriage, yes. They both had two other wives, no. They were cousins, yes, they were cousins, but that's not what I'm talking about. Huh? No! 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 I know what you mean, sister. No, they weren't married to the same person. No. Yes. Huh? Say again? Unity? No. Yeah, he did marry the prophet of Fatima, yes. But what, what, what did they have uniquely in common? Oh, yeah, he was. No, that's not it. Something very interesting. You ready? Say it again. Hmm? Both love women, okay. Brothers and sisters, what is the Prophet's Sunnah in terms of marriage? If I ask you, brothers, what is the Prophet's Sunnah in terms of marriage? What would you say? What was this, what's the Sunnah in terms of marriage? Okay. How many brothers would say it is the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to have more than one wife? If you believe that's the sunnah, raise your hand. Sisters too, how many believe it's the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad to have more than one wife? Raise your hand. Okay. Brothers and sisters, it is not the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad to have more than one wife. It is not, not the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad to have more no. than one wife. His sunnah is marriage. That's his sunnah. I'm saying that for a reason. That's not a trick. Let me tell you why. Proof to you is not a The dalil, that is not a trick. He said in words, my sunnah is marriage. Not two, three, four, five, six, seven, twelve. And I'm telling you why this is important. If you say as a brother, I am going to marry more than one wife because I am following the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have a fallacy in your argument. The woman will say to you, you want to follow the sunnah? Of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa you want to follow his sunnah and marry more than one wife? Fine, follow his sunnah. His sunnah was he married one wife and he never took another wife until his first wife died 25 years being married. And after you marry me for 25 years, then you can take on another wife. That's the sunnah. And you want to follow the sunnah? Follow that. The fallacy is if you try to follow exactly what he did. You won't get in trouble. His sunnah is marriage. That's the sunnah. Now, whether you marry one, two, or three, or four is up to you. It's your choice. Not a trick question. What did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have in common with his cousin Ali, the fourth Khalifa? Yes, ma'am. That's right. 
Ali never took on another wife. He was only married to Fatima, the daughter of Prophet Muhammad sallam, while she was alive. And only when he died, only when she died, did he take on more than one wife at one time. Just some interesting fact to give you. Now, brothers and sisters, we're going to close out, but before we do, I'm going to uh, actually give you an opportunity for some for questions and answers and some dialogue. I mentioned the last point that the sister was talking about. I want to, um, just for your information, brothers and sisters, I just want you to just, just think along with me for a moment. You know, I've said in this class that, in my opinion, America is the chief agent for shaitan, for the devil, in the world, in my opinion. That America are the chief representative and agents of shaitan. This is my opinion. Is it Quran and Sunnah? No, it's what? My opinion. How many of you think that in this country, America, Committing a fornication is a crime punishable by law. Raise your hand. A crime punishable by law. Okay. How many believe that adultery, a man married to a woman and sleeps with another woman, how many believe that in this country, America, it is a crime punishable by law? By, by punishment. Okay, good. How many of you believe that bigamy slash polygamy, bigamy, marriage to two wives, slash all polygamy, more than one wife, is a crime punishable by law in this country? Raise your hand. Okay. Now let's stop and think for a second. What do you think the punishment in this country is for committing fornication? It's there. Are you sure? Is it everywhere? On the books. What's on the books? Is it on the books? Hmm? First point. Fornication. That is two unmarried people committing illegal intercourse. Is not determined by the federal government. But determined by statute. What is the statute? State law. Hmm? S T S T T. Oh yeah, sorry. Statute. Why well, should I mean statute? No. The statute, state statute, is without the T. I think. Huh? Yeah. 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 But I want the state law, statute. This is it. You think a T? I'm going to put it only because you say it. I'm protesting. And the reason I'm protesting, I'm not the best fellow in the world. I could be wrong. I reserve the right to say statute without a T. It, meaning that it's left up to individual states. And brothers and sisters, believe it or not, in many states of America, it's not even a crime to commit fornication. No, no. That's something different. Common law marriage is something different. Common law marriage means that you live with a woman and all intents and purposes she's your wife, but you then go to a legal ceremony. That's what common law marriage is. And there's a difference between... Com I understand the point that you're saying. There's a difference between common law ceremony and uh, fornication. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I, I just wanted to make a comment. I have a problem with taking America as a great shaitan because we're here too. We're Americans. Not everybody in America is bad. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to I didn't mean to give that impression. I don't mean every American. I don't mean that. When I say Amer American, I'm sorry, sister, thank you, Jazakallah Khair. I don't mean all the American people. I mean primarily the American government and its laws. And many of the people that run this government, in my estimation, in my, my opinion, is the big shaitan. We can debate the issue, and I'm, I, I'm going to, 
Uh, as time goes on, I'm going to continue to unfold it. But before you do, sister, let me just give you this, this, this information. This, way, this is just for your information. Hold, hold, hold up, sister, please. Now, same thing with adultery, state law. Some states of the union is not even a crime to commit adultery. In fact, some states of the union, believe it or not, if a man commits adultery with his wife, even after committing adultery, that's not even grounds for divorce. Huh? Some states, I'm saying. Some states still is grounds for divorce. Many states, many states is not even grounds for divorce. Um, a woman can find her husband in a bed with another woman, and she can go and say, I want a divorce because the man committed adultery, and that's not grounds for divorce in many states. What I'm doing, brothers and sisters, the next few moments, I'm showing you some comparisons between the Islam and the state. What is the punishment in Islam for committing adultery? Death by stoning. What is the punishment in Islam for committing adultery? Death by stoning. What is the punishment for committing adultery in America and, and, and uh, in Islam? Death by stoning. What is the punishment for committing adultery in Islam? Death by stoning. I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying. What is the punishment in this country for committing adultery? It varies from state to state. Let me give you one, give an idea. Let me just give you um, um, one example of fornication first and then adultery. Uh, first of all, what's the punishment in Islam for committing fornication? Huh? Hundred slash, hundred slash, hundred. What's the, what's, the, what's the penalty for committing fornication in Islam? Hundred. Hundred strikes, hundred lashes, hundred whips, being whipped a hundred times. Huh? It's in Quran, it's 24th chapter. Massachusetts law. If you have in Massachusetts, this is the law. Whoever commits fornication shall be punished by imprisonment for not more than three months or be fined not more than $30. What year? It's in the law now. Statute, Massachusetts. Holy sister. In Wisconsin, Wisconsin, adultery. Whoever has sexual intercourse with a person, not his spouse, may be fined not more than $200, or in prison, not more than six months, or both. That's adultery. But brothers and sisters, you haven't heard the sad part. The sad part is that none of these laws are even enforced. But, according to the books, the committing of polygamy, which is halal with Allah, what is their punishment in their books is a felony. Hear what I'm telling you? A felony. Fornication, adultery in some states, not even against the law. In any state that is against the law is not enforced. But polygamy, throw the book at them. What is that? Uh, what are they Six years imprisonment in some states and fines of more than $5,000. You can commit adultery, fornication in America is all right. You can go to a whole house, it's all right. House of prostitution is okay, man. You can sneak around, but don't marry the woman and take care of her as the Islamic way. Don't give her justice. Why? Because this country is ruled 
by shaitan. Say what you want to say. The definition of intercourse in Islam is one and only that, penetration. That's the definition. Fondling is not committing zina. It's about zina. Fornication, adultery, the legal definition is penetration. If, I just tell you because you asked the question, if a man is found under the covers of a woman that's not his wife, he cannot be charged or proven to have committed zina. There must be penetration. That's the definition. Yes? If you enforce this kind of law with reference to adultery, not adultery, fornication, and you chastise a child with 80 lashes, then they're going to 100, then they're going to come after you with child abuse. If you, brothers and sisters, try to implement the Islamic law, someone commits fornication, Muslim, and say, brother, stop for law, you commit fornication, take your lashes. He says, okay. We come to the masjid, and we give him a hundred lashes, according to the Quran, according to the law of Islam. That man now goes to the authorities of this country and said that these people beat me. And you can be held liable, and you can go to jail. Because the Islamic law conflicts with the laws of this society. Brothers and sisters, before I let you, sister, I'm going to let you answer. I'm saying to you today, my admonition to this class and to us, you want to be successful? You see, you can't take a part of Islam and say, Allah permits me to have more than one wife, I'm going to get it. Except you also talk about justice. Except you talk about taqwa in the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I detest people who jokingly say to Muslims, oh, you know, he's a Christian, right? I love an Islam man. Man can marry more than one wife. He can marry four wives. I'm going to become a Muslim so that I can have me four women. That's a joke. Why leave Christianity to become a Muslim so you can have four wives when you can be a Christian and have all the women you want? Think about it. I had to come take shahada just to have four women and, I, and, and marry them and take care of them and be equal and have the imam breathing down my neck, having the wife take me to the imam's office. And I can just be in the dunya with the rest of the Christians and Jews and do whatever the heck I want to do. That don't even begin to make sense, man. And you can't argue with the facts because we know the evidence about what they do in this country and their freakishness, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you another thing. Check this out. Do you know what the punishment in Islam for a man found in, in, the, in the barn with his cow. You know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to be nice. A man is in, in the barn with his cow. And we catch him on his cow. <laughs> what you think the punishment is in Islam? Huh? Kill him and kill the cow. That's how bad it is. Kill him and kill the cow. How you kill him? Check this out. Take him on the highest building and drop his butt down. Oh, that's cruel. But what about America? A felony against polygamy. Polygamy is so horrible. But yet, in this country, a man found on top of his cow, the cops say, move over, let me do it too. Now, that's horrible, but I'm saying, brothers and sisters, that's the way it is in this society. It, no, I'm serious. I'm ser honestly, you sound like I sound. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm serious. This is how sick it is because in this society they don't enforce it. In most of the laws in this country, there is no law against homosexuality anymore. In those states that there's a there, there is a law, they don't enforce it. Why? Because the judges are homosexual, the lawyers, the prosecutor, all of them, the cops. All of them are homosexuals, and you know they got a they got a um, they got a, a a police gay gay benevolent association society police. Uh, may I have your ticket, please, sir? 
Can I have your license, please? Please, please step in my car. Let me search you. Telling you, brothers and sisters, this, this country is so wicked to the very core. And I'm saying, don't let them deceive you and thinking something's wrong with the Quran. There's nothing wrong with the Quran. Nothing wrong with our laws. Our laws are right and exact. But what's wrong is in this society. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Now, yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. You will see in the Quran, 24th chapter, that the punishment for zina, zina, is 100 stripes. Let me give you the exact verse. Ali's translation? What did I say? What did I just now say? 24-2, but what did I just say? Can I read Yusuf Ali's translation? What did I say? Can I, can I read Yusuf Ali's translation? Am I reading the Quran right now? What am I reading? Yusuf Ali translation. What it says? The women and men guilty of adultery or fornication, flog each one of them with a hundred stripes. Let not compassion move you in their case in a matter prescribed by Allah if you believe in Allah and the last day. And let a party of the believers witness the punishment. Uh-oh. 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 What we done done here? We opened up a can of worms, didn't we? Let me read what Yusuf Ali's translation says. The woman, the woman and the man guilty of adultery or fornication flogged each of them with a hundred strikes. So what you talking about, Imam Suraj? You said that the punishment for adultery was stolen in the death, but yet the Quran says, uh-uh. Yusuf Ali says, what's the difference? That's why I say, brothers and sisters, Mr. Yusuf Ali was an apologist. Let's read what the Quran says first. What's the Quran? It's the words of Allah. He says, Azaniyatu wa zani fajlidu kulla wahidan minuma. Aha. Azani. Azani. Zani and zaniya. What does zani mean? What does zani mean? What does the word zana mean? Zina. What does it mean? Zina means illegal sexual intercourse in general. What does zina mean? Illegal sexual intercourse. Is fornication zina? Yes. Is adultery zina? Yes. How to understand this verse from the Quran? You've got to go to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He made a distinction between the person who commits zina, illegal sexual intercourse, whether they're single or whether they are married. Any of the people during the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad, during the lifetime of the Khalifa Abu Bakr, during the lifetime of the Khalifa of Umar, or Umar during the lifetime of the Khalifa of Uthman or Ali, any time they committed fornication, the punishment was what? A hundred stripes. And any time the, the crime was adultery, what did the prophet do? What did the Khalifas do? Stoned them to death. Sister, you can find that in Bukhari Hadith, volume number 8, under punishment. Volume number 8, under punishment. And you will see the distinction of zina when a person is single and zina when a person is married. Okay, sister? Yes, ma'am. Yes, 
<laughs> in, no, no. In this country, there's been cases, yes. In the early days, brothers and sisters, you will see America was more of a Christian nation, the days of the 13 original colonies. And there were people that were punished for fornication. But as this society moved into the new sexual age, all of that is changing. The only thing that doesn't change is that law against bigamy and polygamy. They don't want that. Why? Because it seems to imply something to do with Islamic. We got one, two, three. One, yes, brother. Uh, what, uh, what I want to ask you about, you were talking about legalization. Uh, now, you're, you're more than one uh, wife here, uh, if you're married, those who are married there. Uh, do you have any kind of problem here with the uh, governmental structure? Since you don't really have what we call, like I was in other countries, in uh, Africa where they have a separate uh, law which is accepted under the state for Sharia and accepted under the law for what they call a civil law. I don't know that you have anything like that. We don't have it yet. I believe that in time that this country, there are going to be people, Muslims, that's going to fight for that and win in court. Um, and the eight, I'm saying no, I'm telling you no. I'm saying, I'm, give me some more information. Let me, let me, let me answer you fully, inshallah. In the uh, early, late 1800s, the Mormons went to court and fought in the Supreme Court to make polygamy legal. They lost. Right now, you don't have that. You don't have it. In lieu of that, I've been recommending to the brothers and sisters, anyone who's in a polygamous, polygamous relationship should make written papers uh, given uh, certain properties for the protection of both wives. Let me explain something in this country. There's been cases where a man married to a woman, let's say for five years, he deserts the woman, goes to another state, and marry a, another woman without ever having divorced the first wife, lived with the second wife 30 years, and then died, and the court awarded all of his property to the first and only legal wife. Because even in this country, they don't accept sequential, sequential polygamy, which means if you do not divorce one wife, and you marry another relationship, according to this, uh, most of the states, that first wife is still your wife. I'm saying, brothers and sisters, take care of your business. Some of you in Islam are still married to women, so-called legally, in this society. And some of you sisters are still married to brothers legally in this society, and you got married Islamically. And I'm saying to you, take care of your business. Cut the relationship legally with your former mate. Cut it today. Do what you have to do to cut it, because legally, they still have claims against you, even though they may be non-Muslim. Okay, one, Uma, two, three, four, five. Yes. What is something? Don't the Orthodox Jews, number one, practice polygamy, and two, don't they have their own system, their own justice system? Because we spoke of it last uh, week. That they have their own system. They don't even go before the courts when they deal with so, crimes. So. First of all, I don't think that they practice polygamy. I don't think the Orthodox Jews practice polygamy, number one. Uh, number two, there are some things in their family law that the court allows them to handle inside of their jurisdiction and not have to go to the court. In fact, um, th there are some things, too, that the courts would prefer us to deal with and not let them be burdened by our, um, uh, if you would, our problems. But I don't mean polygamy. They, they don't accept that law. But there are cases where the, the courts would prefer that you deal with your own Islamic laws as long as it doesn't conflict with their, with their laws. That's their bottom line. Brothers and sisters, you know, many of us believe that the United States government gives you the right to practice your religion according to your belief, or practice your religion, freedom of religion. It's not true. What this country does is give you freedom of belief. You don't believe me? I have the law books right here. It's very clear. And every law book will tell you, no. You can practice your, you can, you can believe what you want to believe. 
but you sure can't practice what you want to practice. And there's a fundamental difference. Yes, ma'am, then you'll just... Yeah. What are we doing to ourselves? You are 100% right. Why are we making it the country a Muslim or essentially Muslim? Guess what? More Muslim countries Guess what? instead of complaining no, about No, 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 no. Guess what? It is our desire to, in fact, change it. We have a mandate from Quran and Sunnah to change it. Whenever you see an evil, change it. And how do you do it? The way the Prophet did it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he did, teach Tawheed, oneness of Allah, go out, develop, and grow. I think, you, sister, you're absolutely correct. We should, we should stop just talking about it, but try to do something about it. Inshallah, we will. And we are. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good question. Let me tell you what the law is. A man is not permitted to go four months without consummating with his wife or being with his wife. Four months. If, un un unless she agrees, and if he does go four months without being intimate with his wife, those are grounds for divorce. Now, the spirit of Islam you are not um, you're not a true believer until you want for your brother what you want for yourself then that means brothers and sisters that we ought to to be sensitive to the needs of our mates that's the spirit of Islam is that right now brother don't you don't we sometimes get the hadith and club the sisters if they don't want to be intimate, and we say, it's not right, you, it's, it's, you know, the angels curse you until morning, don't we say that? And don't we take the hadith and say, remember what the hadith said, honey? Now, what about the sister who says that? Because what you could do, what we could do, listen to me, what you could do, actually, is push them toward the haram just the way they can push us toward the haram. So, we must be cognizant of that. And if you fear that you can't keep within the limits, then you must consider separating. It's real. Because otherwise you cause chaos in the family, stay together in peace, and that ma'aruf means everything. It means intimacy. And that's why the verse says, sister, don't leave them hanging suspended. What does that mean? It means that they cannot enjoy sexual gratification because you are not doing it, and at the same time they can't go outside of the marriage to do it. So you keeping them hanging. Wait a minute, sister, you're not next. Uh, yes, ma'am. Sister, I'll call on you, wait. Shalom. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, sister, say it a little louder. Excellent question. Is it permissible for a brother, if he's not taking care of a first wife, is it permissible for him to take on another wife, even if his first wife is on public assistance? Now, brothers and sisters, that is totally ludicrous. Here's a person has a business. The business is failing, is in the red, losing money, making no money. They say, oh, let me go open up another business and keep this business open. Does that make sense? No, brothers and sisters, it is to me a foolish, 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 foolish thing to do for a brother who's not taking care of his first wife. He hasn't met the foundation, the fundamentals of the first wife, and he's going to take extra burden on his neck. No. Sister, it doesn't make sense. It's not right. And certainly... If they come here, I'm not going to perform the marriage. I'm not going to, if I know that situation exists, they say, Brother Sheikh, please, I want you to marry me to this sister, please. So you want to marry to this sister? Oh, yeah? Not me, buddy. Mustafa? What are you saying? Sister, is married, and 
they weren't divorced legally by the state. Yes. Okay, and if a sister remarries Islamically, yes. what is her condition? Now, we understand that the brother can have more than one wife, yes. so it may be a little more leeway for him. But with a sister situation, if she's not divorced legally and she remarries Islamically, is there a penalty or what is her condition? It's a good question. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat the question. Brother asked the question, if a woman is married, um, let's say married to a man legally, brother, this is, I'm, I'm, I want to define what I mean by legally here, is married according to this law. Because married according to Islam is legally. Now, if she's married according to this law, she should first get divorced according to this law. First dissolve it. Now, there's situations where a uh, person, let's say a woman married to a man, he deserts her. She can't find him. And there used to be times in this country, most states, you had to wait seven years before you can, the man can be presumed dead legally. That means you have to make some effort to find him. It's called the Enoch Laws. Enoch Laws. E-N-O-C-K-H. Enoch Laws. But most laws changed and they moved it from seven to five. But then what, what states did is use another law called desertion. And when a man deserts the wife, that's the grounds for divorce. My first point is this, Mustafa, is that sisters and brothers, well, especially sisters, have to resolve their first relationship first. If they're married, if they're tied to this system, they have to untie themselves to the system because of the fitna that can happen. Because that man can come back on the scene and he still has legal claim and rights over you, sister, and it can cause a big problem. And according to the state, your second marriage would be invalid. Even Islamically, you are still, the woman is still, even Islamically, the woman is still married to the man. She didn't stop it. What did they do? Islam, you can't just, uh, just stop. There's something that you have to do. Death stops it. Or divorce stops it. It doesn't stop it by walking away. That doesn't. You have to get a legal document saying that you divorced from this particular person, lest you're still married. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Good. Okay. Yes. Uh, does a woman have the right to obey her husband? If the husband has her on public assistance, being that we know that the Quran says that the man are the maintainers. Question is, wouldn't it be the state having more rights? In fact, the state does have more rights. I'll, I'll show you to the second. The question is this: If the husband, the question is, does a does a wife have does a wife have to obey her husband if she's on public assistance? He said, "Look, man." On the man of the house, obey me. She says, yes, I will obey the man of the house. Or well, the man of the house is not you. It's Uncle Sam. I'm telling you what it is. Uncle Sam says what it is. Because when Uncle Sam come on the scene, you got to do what Uncle Sam say do. And that's why the brothers have to get our wives off the of public assistance. We got to take care of our wives ourselves. Brothers, I'm telling you, we have to do it. We have to do it. And you know what? Our wives will never really respect us as they will until we get them off of the public system. I'd rather work and sweep the street, make me a dollar, take care of my wife, rather than let the system disrespect her and she got to go and lie and say, I ain't got no man, but every year you got a new baby, but you ain't got no man because you lie. Get some dollars from the system. You can't do that. We can't do it. We have to say, no, man. I'll take care of my wife. You get out the way, Uncle Sam. I struggle, man. I do whatever I have to do. I tell you, I work two jobs, man. I'm going to take care of my woman. I'm going to take care of her. That's it. You know something? She's right. Brother, in my opinion, she said, it sounds like a joke, but she's right. She said, why don't the men get on public assistance? In my opinion, it's better, it's better for the man to go deal with the man. And say, look, man, I got a bad situation right now. I'm not, I can't find a job. I want to work. 
Give me a job and I'll work, but right now I can't work it. I'm not going to send my wife here and lie in your face. Here I am, man. Deal with me. Give me some money to take care of my family or give me a damn job. That's what we have to do. And I agree with you, sister. Instead of money, you sit down in the home and you send your wife out. Go and get that money. Go get it. Go and lie. Get that money. Bring that money back here. Get out of my face with that stuff. Yes, ma'am. Well, they slow for that. How do you mean, sister? You mean shacking up? No, 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 shacking up, no. I'm sorry, I don't, I'm sorry, say it again. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. Okay, I'm sorry, good. In what way, sister, can she become part of the household? Give an example. Okay, okay. Okay. Why you so? From the, let me give you some the little from the history of, of Islam, inshallah. There was a woman. Oh, yeah. The, the question is, I think, if I got it right, sister, can a woman decide to live in a household with another family, including a man, right, and other people, perhaps? Yeah. Can she get into that situation and live with them like an extended family, sort of, without marrying that particular man? That's the question. And I think, I think, I think. Let's put some circumstances around it. Let me give you what I know from the history of Islam. There was a, 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 um, a woman named Fatima bint Qais. And you can find this in Muslim Hadith, volume number two, in the last chapter under divorce, the first 15 Hadiths, gives you this story. Fatima bint Qais. She was divorced by her husband, irrevocable. And her husband asked her to leave the house. And the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa told her, to stay at such and such house. Not to marry the person, but stay at such and such house. Then he thought, he called her back. No, don't go there, because many of my Sahaba visit that house and you'll not be able to keep the hijab. Therefore, go to um, um, Umar Mukhtar, um, not Umar Mukhtar, what's Um, the blind, the blind brother. Ibn Um Mukhtum, Ibn Um Mukhtum, or something like that, I forgot his exact name. She says, he's, she, he was a relative, by the way, of hers. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, go there, and then you can reject, relax your hijab a little. The general principle, sister, is that um, we can't be alone in a situation where a man and a woman can be alone, but she cannot uh, practice her hijab or seclusion, if you would. Technically, it's not haram for a woman in a particular circumstance to find herself in a home where she is protected by other people because the hadith says it's not permissible for a woman and man to be alone in seclusion without someone else. So if you're in a situation where there's no seclusion, then it's okay. But you got to be very, 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 very careful about that. In general, I would say no, that you can't do it. You just can't move into a, 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 a Family, I think. But let me let me check out the um, the legal ramifications of that, inshallah. Um, Kareem, I'm sorry. In other words, if you want to live in a close family, yeah. we call them brothers. No, I think, sister, everywhere in Islam, we should try to avoid the bad, the harm. If you are placed in a situation where it's harmful, then it's better to be in a situation less harmful. So when you look at each situation, you have to make an evaluation because in Islam, alhamdulillah, it's flexible enough because of what's called darara or, or um, darara is like need, you know, no, what's, what's that word? Necessity, out of necessity. You're in a certain circumstance that the choice is to live with this Muslim family or live in a shelter. 
where it's dangerous. Then you live with the Muslim family until you get yourself in the best position. Kareem? Yes. And she's on public assistance. You are not yours. Okay. But you, but you know, the, I'm still a man of the house. Okay. And, and also, if she gets public assistance, I'm taking nothing from her. Yeah. So, uh, so what I'm saying, what about a case like that? Okay. I want to make, thank you, Brother Dr. Clark. I want to make a distinction. <clears throat> I want to make a distinction. A sister. All right. Um, you know, we have, we have to stop for slot after this. If you want to, we can come back. Okay? But we have to stop for salats. Hey, sister, let me first do this first. It's a brother marries a sister. She's on public assistance. And he takes her off of public assistance in terms of himself with her. But she has children who receive or entitled to receive public assistance. Now, the question is, can that man leave those children that are not his but she has, she has from a previous relationship, from a previous marriage, can uh, they receive, can she receive for them public assistance? That's the, that's the question. It's a difference. It's a difference. And I'll be honest with you, there's a difference. In Islam, the man is not responsible for the children of another man. The responsibility is always on the natural father of the children. That's always the responsibility. Now, if a sister is receiving, in my opinion, this is like a, a fatwa that's not binding. If a man is receiving, if a woman is receiving public assistance, she's not lying, the father's abandoned, the father's not taking care of his responsibility, the question is, can she receive that? As far as I'm concerned, yes. I think it's better, better, if the Islamic community would develop in a way that the Islamic community could take care of the Muslims rather than the Kafirs. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا اليهود والنصارى أولياء بعضهم أولياء بعض. Oh, you believe? Take not the Christians and the Jews and the Christians as friends and protectors, as walis. Don't take them as walis, friends and protectors. They are friends and protectors of one another. So my estimation, the Muslim community should put themselves in a position where they can do it. And I would encourage the man, I would encourage the man himself, even though it's not his responsibility, but to try to do it. Because in my estimation, it would be better than letting the Catholics do it. But you know, there's, there's some, you know, one of the things that we have to recognize is that some of our tax dollars is in that money. So, but, so there's a, there's a whole system of things that we have to do, inshallah. But I, I agree with you, it's a difference, it's a 100% difference than a man having his wife lie, going to wel welfare, and having the welfare take care of her. I think it's a 100% difference. Jazakallah khair. We have to stop now for salah, because it's now almost 20 minutes to 12. I promise you, I promise you, after salah, we come right back, and I only have like 20 minutes because we have to go to another program, okay? Subhanaka al wa bihamdika wa nashadu wa la ilaha ila anta. Last week. I want to remind you again that polygamy is not an Islamic institution. Polygamy existed before the revelation of the Quran. What Allah in fact has done, He has regulated it. He has made it only that a man can marry up to four wives at one time. I mentioned you to last week that there's one time that it becomes haram. It's not permissible for a man to take another wife. And when is that? Huh? Yes. According to the Quran, if a man fears that he cannot be just between two wives, he can only marry one. So you must at least have the, the, the at least have the belief I can be just between them. But I also mentioned last week, according to the ayah of the Quran, "Aaudu billahi min shaitan rajim, wa lan tastatihu an taadilu bain al nisa, wa lau harastum," that a man cannot be just. He will never be able, never be able to have the ability to be just between wives even if it was his ardent desire. Now, what does that mean? We said that meant what, Umar? Okay, it's saying, this ayat from the Quran is saying that a man cannot be just between wives in terms of affairs of the heart. 
That's what it's talking about. Why? Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu gave us the example. When Allah says in Quran that um, if you fear that you'll not be able to be just between wives, He's not talking about the affairs of the heart because you can't be just, even though it's your desire. But in terms of treating them e with equality and justice, that you have to do, inshallah. Also, we said, brothers and sisters, that uh, America is a Christian nation and legally polygamy is and bigamy is illegal, but it's practiced in this country, in de facto, in reality. Um, we said that more polygamy is practiced in America than all the Muslim countries combined, but it's polygamy, American style. Um, also, by the way, brothers and sisters, really, according to the Christian religion, nothing in the Bible, nothing in the Torah, nothing in the Injil that teaches against polygamy. In fact, some of the great prophets had more than one wife. Prophet Suleiman, Solomon, Prophet David, Prophet Abraham, Prophet Moses, Many of them, and many prophets, they had many wives, and this is according to their own Bible. So is this the people in this society who allow you to have, um, here you go, you have a mayor of New York City. A mayor who yesterday, instead of marching in front of the parade, he marches with the gay people. Can you imagine that? The mayor of the city marching with gay, here it is, against the Bible, against the Torah, and then when he marches with them to say that it's okay, look, it's okay to be gay, it's okay to be homosexual. So brothers and sisters, this is against us. And we said also last week, never apologize for what Allah has revealed in the Quran. You don't have to apologize. It's there. Polygamy is, is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted. And the last point I said, some of the uh, sisters think, and some of the apologists have said that a woman could never stand to share her man with another uh, with another woman. And we said that's not true. While women who's the first wife may not like the idea of a husband taking another wife, but it's the women who is the second, the third, or the fourth wife who chooses voluntarily to marry a man already married, which says that the law of polygamy, polygamy is as beneficial for the woman as it is for the man. In fact, I think that if we banned it, which we can't do, we said no more polygamy, I think more sisters would be hurt than that by than brothers. That's how I feel. Now, brothers and sisters, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up for questions and answers, statements. Any statements you want to have, it's okay. Now is the time to do them. Last week, you had about 10 people had some statements to make, and now I'm going to give you that opportunity. Questions and or statements. Yes. Uh, by many sisters that uh, they wouldn't be against it as much as if the brother approached it in the correct manner. Would you expound on what is the correct procedure? Okay, good. Brother said that there's some sisters who said that they wouldn't mind it so much if the brothers approached it from the right manner. And I agree with him, by the way. I agree that all of us need to go to school in a real sense and to learn how to approach it. Number one, if a first of all, we shouldn't sneak around and do it um, in secret. Why shouldn't we get married in secret? It's against the Sunnah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, in getting married, proclaim it, announce it. And the more people, the better. Don't go, brother, one of the worst things you can do, go and sneak and get married to another sister and your wife don't even know about it. This is not Islam. This has nothing to do with Islam. Why? Because the polygamy affects everybody. That means everything has changed. The wife's time has changed. And so when you're going to be away from your wife, what you going to do? Lie? So where were you? I was working all night. Every other night you work all night long? No, it doesn't make sense. And because sooner or later you're going, to, you're going to be confronted by it anyway. Not only that, if you sneak and marry a sister and nobody knows about it, or very few people know about it, if you're with this woman in public, it's a Muslim sister, then you give her a bad name. They said, what's this sister doing riding around in that car with that brother? Well, that's my husband. But who knows about it? So you bring suspicion on the couple. And it looks very, very, very bad. So the first thing we should do, we should be honest uh, you know, with ourselves, honest with our mates, and then to do it, or to do it in the open. Inshallah. Yes. Good, everybody's in the spirit of Ramadan, they don't want to talk about polygamy today. That's very good. Uh, good. All right, um, 
That's it. Yes, sir, Mustafa. Wa alaikum salam. If the brother is married um, to a uh, two wives, one is a Christian and one is a, a Muslim, and he dies, who would have better right to that body? I would say what he should do, he should write a will, saying that in the case that I die, I want to be uh, buried according to the Islamic law, contact such and such person. And brothers and sisters, this is very important because I know cases, we know cases where brothers have died and sisters have died and their family members took their body and buried them as a Christian and we couldn't do anything about it. So please make sure you take, your, take care of your business. We have papers about how to prepare your will and also um, statements about death if you die. Um, uh, I don't know if we have any more left. Is Lukman still around? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum we have any we have any more of those sheets around? Anybody know? No, I have one. I can run some copies if you would have you, one. Inshallah, when could you bring it? When could you bring it? Next week, inshallah, this class I'll help you. Okay, inshallah, next week um, Brother Shakur will bring us some of those sheets and papers that talks about how to dispose of our bodies if we die, inshallah. Yes, answer? Yes, I was debating with the brother and uh, I told him that he had to tell his first wife that he was going to get married, he said that you said that you don't have to. No. Okay. I said, let me tell you what I said. Okay. The question is, does a man need the permission of his first wife in order to take another wife? No, he doesn't. But does he have to tell? Of course he has to tell.